In the hushed corridors of memory, there's a certain magic that clings to our first encounters with the silver screen. Imagine the flicker of anticipation, the whispered thrill of the unknown as you settled into that dimly lit theater, or the cozy corner of your living room. And then, in 1978, it arrived, Coma, a cinematic journey that took us by storm, immersing us in a world both surreal and hauntingly real. Do you recall the way your pulse quickened as the plot unfolded, drawing you into a tangled web of medical intrigue and spine-tingling suspense? Faces illuminated by the glow of the screen, hearts racing in sync with the characters, unraveling lives. Coma had a unique power to etch itself into the corridors of our minds. Perhaps it was that pivotal moment, a twist in the tale, when you realized the true depths of the mystery at play. Or the eerie sensation that crept over you as you navigated the labyrinthine corridors of the Jefferson Institute, searching for answers that seemed to slip just out of reach. And now, as we stand at this juncture, let's journey back and reflect on those memorable moments, the gasps, the shivers, the conversations that lingered long after the credits rolled. But there's more to uncover about this enigmatic film, tidbits that add an extra layer of fascination to the tale. Did you know that the renowned Michael Crichton penned the original novel on which the movie is based? Or that the film's spine-chilling premise struck a chord with audiences, sparking discussions about the delicate balance between science and ethics? So, let's venture forth, delving into these captivating pieces of trivia that weave together the fabric of coma. Each fact, a thread that tugs at the tapestry of our cinematic history, inviting us to peer closer to understand not just the story on the surface, but the intricate details that make it a masterpiece. In a riveting twist for its time, the 1978 film Coma held more than just medical mysteries within its frames. Among its intriguing facets, one stands out, the duality of the scenes featuring patients in the titular Coma Clinic. Director Michael Crichton's meticulous approach led to the filming of two versions of these scenes. In one iteration, the patients appeared semi-naked, while in a more conservative rendition aimed at television screenings, they were discreetly covered up. This directorial choice added an extra layer of intrigue, underscoring the film's exploration of hidden truths and unsettling realities. A pivotal moment in coma rises when Dr. Moreland, the psychiatrist inadvertently spills the beans about Dr. Wheeler's intimate involvement with Dr. Bellows. The breach of doctor-patient confidentiality serves as a jarring reminder that something is amiss within the hospital's corridors. This narrative nuance contributes to the overarching theme of concealed agendas and questionable practices, creating an unsettling atmosphere that permeates the film. Publicity surrounding the movie also marked a significant milestone for seasoned actor Richard Widmark. With a remarkable career spanning three decades in the film industry, Widmark's involvement in Coma commemorated his 30th anniversary as a movie actor. This added a layer of prestige to the film, drawing attention not only to its engaging storyline but also to the caliber of talent it had attracted. As the screen flickers and the plot unfolds, Coma unravels a world of secrets and uncertainties, with every detail meticulously crafted to immerse viewers in its unsettling narrative. From its dual scenes to its exploration of professional boundaries, the film offers a glimpse into a world where appearances can be deceiving and trust is a luxury. So there you have Eda tapestry of intriguing insights that make Coma not only a suspenseful thriller, but also a cinematic work that leaves its mark on both plot and production. Julie Christie's missed role in Coma, casting insights unveiled in the annals of cinematic what-ifs. The 1978 thriller Coma stands as a stark reminder of the casting choices that could have dramatically reshaped the film's trajectory. Amid whispers of Hollywood's intrigue, it was revealed that Julie Christie, a luminary of the silver screen, was the initial frontrunner for the role of Dr. Susan Wheeler, the central figure in Michael Crichton's gripping medical mystery. Akin to a symphony of probabilities, the role eventually fell to Genevieve Bujold, whose on-screen prowess resonated as she stepped into the enigmatic shoes of Dr. Wheeler. Yet, the shadow of Christie's near casting loomed large, painting a vivid picture of an alternate reality where her name would have been synonymous with the role. 
While Bujold's portrayal remains an indelible mark in cinema history, one can't help but wonder how Christie Zora might have infused the narrative with a different energy. The choice to pivot from Christie was undoubtedly a pivotal juncture in the film's course, as it set the stage for an unforgettable exploration of medical intrigue and ethical conundrums. The Symphony of Silver Screen Destinies, however, echoes further. Farrah Fawcett, then riding the wave of her Charlie's Angels fame, found herself unable to seize the opportunity to embody Dr. Wheeler due to prior commitments. The collision of schedules thus contributed to Bujold's eventual ascent, solidifying her connection to the role. Notably, the film's adaptation from Crichton's source novel necessitated a constellation of changes. In the literary realm, Dr. Susan Wheeler was cast as a feminist blonde medical student, but on celluloid. Her essence shifted to that of a brunette second-year surgical resident. The feminist undercurrents that flowed through the novel were, for the most part, distilled in the film, relegated to sporadic arguments between characters. Furthermore, the locale metamorphosed from page to screen. In the book's universe, the medical institute was ensconced within the city's embrace, whereas the film transposed it to an outer suburban sprawl, subtly altering the dynamics of the narrative's atmospheric cadence. As the credits rolled on coma, the choices and changes that shaped its on-screen incarnation remained both an ode to the convergence of fates and an homage to the roads less traveled in Tinseltown. Julie Christie's might have been role lingered as a footnote. Farrah Fawcett's brush with casting fate stood as a testament to the capricious nature of showbiz, and the film's transmutation from text to visual masterpiece echoed the delicate dance between mediums. In the end, Coma stands as a mosaic of choices made and the serendipity that elevated Genevieve Bujold into cinematic history as Dr. Susan Wheeler, while still leaving room for the silent echoes of what could have been. been. Ed Harris' remarkable debut in 1978 Seconds Coma in 1978. A gripping medical thriller, Coma captivated audiences with its spine-chilling exploration of hospital horrors. Notably, it marked the feature film debut of the talented Ed Harris, who would later become a cinematic icon. Harris' portrayal injected depth into his character, enhancing the film's intensity and foreshadowing his future success on the silver screen. Director Michael Crichton, acclaimed for his ability to infuse science fiction with realism, delved into the fears that reside within hospital walls. In an interview with Millimeter Magazine, Crichton shared, This is a story that contains many elements of reality. The fear people have of surgery, the fear of dying at the hands of your doctor, phobias about hospitals. Crichton's ingenious approach was to balance these palpable fears, constructing a safe yet exhilarating perspective that allowed audiences to embrace the scares without succumbing to deeper anxieties. Furthermore, the film bore an intriguing similarity to other cinematic works. Actor Michael Douglas drew parallels, likening Coma to a fusion of love story, and the hospital, garnished with suspense reminiscent of Alfred Hitchcock's masterpieces. An amusing twist emerged as well Crichton, who helmed the film, had once penned novels under the pseudonym Michael Douglas, a composite of his and his brother's names. In Coma, the convergence of Ed Harris' early brilliance, Crichton's deft narrative, and the film's intriguing thematic blend proved an irresistible formula for cinematic success. The film stands as a testament to the power of skillful storytelling, and the exploration of genuine fears within a controlled cinematic framework. <laughs> Producer's vision in Coma echoes the legacy of Jaws in the realm of cinematic thrillers. Few directors have captivated audiences with the potency of fear quite like Martin Ehrlichman did in 1978 Seconds Coma. Drawing inspiration from the primal dread conjured by Jaws a few years prior, Ehrlichman embarked on a journey to illuminate the fears lurking within the sterile walls of hospitals. As the producer of Coma, he envisioned a narrative that harnessed the universal unease surrounding medical institutions, much like Spielberg's classic had done for the ocean. Ehrlichman's connection to Coma extended beyond his role as a producer. He stumbled upon the source novel by Robin Cook in its galley form, igniting a fascination that propelled the film into being. Drawing parallels to the elemental fears evoked by Jaws, Ehrlichman astutely noted, people have a primal fear of the ocean and Jaws titillated that phobia. 
In a similar manner, coma accents one's primal fears of hospitals. Akin to the way Jaws triggered unease about venturing into waters, coma struck a chord by magnifying apprehensions tied to hospital visits that we grapple with, often unconsciously. Ehrlichman's ingenious coupling of Cook's medical expertise with Michael Crichton's directorial prowess proved to be a masterstroke. Crichton, who remarkably juggled medical school with his artistic pursuits, brought a unique perspective to the film. This synergy gave birth to a cinematic experience that went beyond mere entertainment, delving into the crevices of the collective psyche. The film's setting within a coma clinic, where background artists were suspended by wires, added an eerie realism. The physical strain they endured, captured in intense six-minute intervals, translated into authentic performances that etched themselves into the viewer's consciousness. In Ehrlichman's words, this is an even stronger phobia because a person can always refrain from going into the water, but cannot always avoid the necessity of going into a hospital. With coma, he embarked on a mission to illuminate the shadows lurking in the corners of health sanctuaries, much like Jaws had done for the open waters. The legacy of coma endures as a testament to the power of primal fears harnessed on the silver screen, leaving an indelible imprint on the landscape of psychological thrillers. Logical thrillers. Logical thriller. As we unravel the memories woven within the celluloid tapestry of the 1978 cinematic gem, Coma. We find ourselves on a journey not just through the chilling corridors of a medical mystery, but into the depths of our own emotional labyrinth. The pulsating heartbeats of the plot, the suspense that grips us like a surgeon's precision, and the characters who dance the delicate tango between life and death, they all conspire to paint an indelible picture in our minds. As you contemplate the lingering echoes of this cinematic masterpiece, perhaps you're reminded of the visceral reactions it elicited the night spent at the edge of your seat, or the whispered conversations dissecting its enigmatic allure. Did you find yourself pondering the ethics of medical exploration, the fragility of human trust, or the stark contrast between the sterile hospital walls and the complex human drama that unfolds within them? Your personal connection to coma is a testament to the film's power to mirror our own fears and aspirations resonating across time and space. So, here's your moment to shine. Share with us your treasured memories, your revelations, and your musings about coma. Whether you were mesmerized by the haunting cinematography, captivated by the performances that left an indelible mark, or drawn into its labyrinthine narrative, your thoughts are the final piece of this cinematic puzzle. Thank you for taking this introspective journey through the corridors of coma. Your time and insights are valued threads in the fabric of our collective experience. So, let your voice be heard and your memories be immortalized. After all, great films not only shape the art of cinema, but the stories of our lives as well. Warmest thanks for your time and interest.